Hi, I'm Fraser Douglas, the avid tent camper. This weekend, my sisters and I are camped at Tannehill State Historic Park near Birmingham, Alabama. The weather's been very, very hot. We got a little rain last night, but it's warm again today. Uh, in this video, I thought I would show you some different methods for processing firewood so that you can cook your meals on a small stove like this. I'll start this video by talking about the best axes for splitting firewood. When selecting an axe to process firewood, you should consider the weight of the head, the shape of the head, and the length of the handle. In my opinion, the Dayton pattern on the left and the Michigan pattern on the right are the two best patterns for splitting firewood. On the other hand, the carpenter's half hatchet on the left, the hewing axe, the double bitted axe, and the tomahawk are poorly suited for processing firewood. A splitting maul would be best suited for splitting large tree rounds, but once it's split into firewood, a one and three quarter pound head with an 18 to 24 inch handle is best suited for splitting that firewood. When splitting smaller pieces of firewood and making kindling, I would prefer a smaller ax, such as the two shown in the top of this photo. But when you go camping, you can only take one ax, and so the best ax, in my opinion, is this Estwing Camper's Ax 14, shown at the bottom in the photo. The best firewood for camping is USDA certified or state certified heat treated pest free oak and hickory. Bundles of USDA or state certified firewood are typically sold in home improvement stores, grocery stores, and sometimes convenience stores. Most campgrounds forbid burning untreated wood that was brought from your home or from other campgrounds, and they sell wood in the campground. Unfortunately, the firewood sold in many campgrounds is poorly suited for splitting and or cooking. For example, pine is easy to split, but it leaves a sticky creosote residue on the bottom of your pots and on your food that you grill over the fire. Sweet gum, elm, and ironwood are impossible to split, and so you can't make small pieces of stove wood or kindling from them. Oak with knots or twisted grains are also difficult to split. Whenever you split wood, you need to have something to protect your eyes. Now, since I wear fairly large glasses, I have depended on them to provide my eye protection and thus far they have not failed. But if you do not wear glasses, you definitely, or if you wear small glasses or contacts, you definitely need to wear some sort of protection for your eyes. Uh, second of all, you need to have gloves so that you don't uh, pinch your fingers or get splinters in your hand and to per perhaps protect your hand from an accidental contact with the sharp edge of the axe. Now, I should be wearing long pants, but I'm not. But ideally, if you're processing wood, you should wear long pants. And you should also wear closed-toed shoes. I'm wearing sneakers. Uh, uh, a hard toe would be better, but uh, I'm hoping that I won't hurt myself. Now, when I begin, when I start to split a piece of wood, such as this piece of oak right here, I want to look up above me and make sure that when I swing my axe up in the air, it is not going to hit anything up there. And I also want to look around me to make sure that there's no one else standing close by or no other object that might accidentally make contact with my axe and change its direction. You'll also need a sturdy tree round to safely split firewood. To split larger pieces of firewood, I'm gonna start with my house axe with the 24 inch handle. Now when I'm splitting 
a large piece of wood, I'm going to swing moderately hard. I'm not going to swing as hard as I can because there's a possibility that I will hit just the edge and glance and that hard swing will bring the axe back toward my leg. Or it's a possibility that this piece of wood will split much easier than I expect and the axe will go all the way through and come back toward my leg. So I'm going to just give it a moderate swing just enough to get it stuck in the top of this wood. Now this piece of wood is typical for a piece of firewood. It's a piece of red oak. It's about four and a half inches in diameter across the top and it's about 17 and a half inches long. Now I want to break this piece of wood down to um, small uh, six inch pieces of firewood that are about uh, one to two inches in diameter. First of all, I want to put my ax out and I want to hit it slightly toward me like this and I want to squat so that when it, if it goes all the way through the piece of wood, my blade will go down into the wood rather than coming back toward me. I don't want to hit that wood on the far side like this because if I do, if the axe goes through it, the wood on the near side will come up and damage my handle. Now I've got my axe stuck in there and I can do other things now to safely split this without having to swing the axe toward me. I'm going to turn it upside down. and split it that way. Now I've got two pieces. I'm gonna do the same thing with them. I wanna remove my ax because I was a little too far to the far side and reposition my ax in that crack. And again, turn it upside down. And split it. Sometimes a piece of firewood is difficult to split because of a knot such as this piece of red oak. I've uh, tried my upside down technique it just doesn't seem to be going very far and so now I'm going to use a plastic felling wedge and uh, another piece of firewood as a baton to help split this piece of wood. If you don't have plastic felling wedges, you can easily make wedges from other pieces of firewood. I'm using this plastic felling wedge instead of an iron splitting wedge because the iron splitting wedge is much heavier to carry and you need a heavier sledgehammer rather than a piece of firewood to drive it through the wood. So let's see what happens here. I'm gonna put this wedge into my crack. And that, uh, that allows me that allows me to get my ax out. I'll use the second wedge to continue splitting. My wedges are getting kind of chewed up. I'm going to have to replace them soon. And we got that piece of wood split. Now, I'm going to use a side splitting technique. I'm going to put my axe handle and the blade about halfway there and I'm going to swing it down and when I swing it down I want the heel of my axe to land on the edge, the far edge of this tree stump.
and we have that broken. I'm gonna do that again. If a piece of wood will not sit on your splitting platform by itself, there are a couple of things that you can do. Uh, one is to hold it in place with another piece of wood and swing your ax down again just to stick it into the wood and then you can turn it upside down. Um, that way you don't have to worry about accidentally hitting your hand. Another thing that you can do is to pick the ax and the piece of wood up together and drop it until you get the ax stuck in the wood and now you can split it. Some people will hold the piece of wood in place and swing their ax, but this is a very dangerous practice and you should never do that because one slip and that ax goes down and cuts off a thumb or a finger. Well, I've learned over time that I can't post a video on YouTube that's longer than around 12 minutes long. And so I'm gonna break this video right here and start a part two of this video. Be sure and catch the last half of the wood splitting techniques. For more information about axes and wood stove cooking, please visit my website, Modern Tent Camping.